people question women's intelligence like we can't tell the difference from complimenting and sexual harassment. Do you know what? I don't know anyone that wakes up and starts their day by calling somebody ugly. I think she's super proud of Drake. <laughs> Welcome to the Gender. Today on the show, I am joined by three wonderful women. Yes, alliteration, yeah. We are joined by the amazing Maya Jama, Ray Black, and Tiffany Karma. Woo! This is just this is just such great vibe. No, wait, Zoo, do you know when we actually first met? in the corner shop by a Labrick Grove station and you were with AJ and Tracy and you were like, Maya, this is my friend AJ, he's going to be massive one day. <laughs> oh, I love that. My heart. Hey, do you know what happened? Maya was in the shop, yeah, I've gone to Chase. Hey, that's my jammy, you know? And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, allow it, allow it. I'm like, listen, man's going to tell her she's going to play your song. We went to you, we were like, yeah, you're going to play the Mandela's rhythm one day. And then Maya was like, sorry, I don't control the playlisting actually. <laughs> And then I swear to God, I swear to God, <laughs> within bad, like two weeks. Sometimes. Nah, nah, that's what I'm saying. Within like two weeks, something got spun. I played him. So. Gone. I played him. I'm gonna go straight in. I want to talk about how do you guys deal with trolls, yeah? Because everyone gets trolls. You know, when you put yourself out there, you put, you're putting yourself into the limelight and you're leaving yourself exposed to other people's opinions. What has it been like dealing with trolls? I'm gonna start with you, Miss Maya. It's been like seven years I've been online or I don't know, however many years I've had in my career so far. And nobody's ever said anything horrible to my face or been mean in person or anything like that. But if I believed everything that was written online, you'd probably end up scared to go outside because you'd think, right, if that's how many people are saying that, and that must be how real people are. And it's not. I think it's just like a, there's a big sense of security on the internet and it just allows people to offload on strangers sometimes. And it's not nice, but the mute button, the block button, um, mute certain words and yeah just some try and feel a bit sorry for them and think do you know what I don't know anyone that wakes up and starts their day by calling somebody ugly or anything like that like how are you feeling as a person to go out and do that so yeah you've got to kind of pray for them I, I do sometimes clap back but only if I've got a funny thing to say back and I can like you know banter them back but that's the only time otherwise I just blocker 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 um well blocker, okay, I can blocker, give you from blocker. my experience sometimes clapping back does not work yeah, <laughs> sometimes you do the clap back and then now the whole conversation is about what you clap back. Has that ever happened yeah. to one of oh, you guys? Didn't bang. The clap back didn't bang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still getting accustomed to trolling. Uh, I've definitely yeah. messaged Maya a multitude of times about it where I'm just like, what the hell? Or like, I don't know, sometimes I'll see a bad comment and it might ruin my day. Or, you know, I'll message my friends and, like, I, I'll just be, like, miserable for the day. I do what Maya does. Like, I, I don't even mean, I just unfollow. If your account doesn't make me feel good, I just unfollow. Um, and <laughs> blocker, I also blocker. actually... <laughs> just block up, block up, block up, block up. <laughs> because it's just, like... I'm not really, yeah, I, I don't want to see that sort of content. And then also, um, a good thing I think is good for girls, I follow people who, like sort of have a similar body shape to me or style to me or whatever, mm -hmm. because I think like as a girl, you see all of these like abs snatch, like, do you know what I mean? Just uh, make like obviously beautiful looking women. And I think if you spend too much time scrolling, you're just like, oh mate, why is your stomach looking flat and mine's doing all like it's jumping. So <laughs> I just feel like it's, it's healthy to like it's follow jumping. people who you can relate to. So I follow people who I feel like I can relate to. I was speaking to my friend the other day about it and I was like, I don't know anyone, like I don't follow any of the blogs or anything like that, but I actually don't know anyone in real life that comments are like cussing someone online. Like I don't know Why anybody would you do that? that would go out of the way. So I'm just like, who are these people that actually spend their day like cussing people they don't know? Like I don't, yeah. I don't know where they are. It's just a bit yeah. of a mad yeah. concept to me, but. Do you know what though? I try, I try to see it as like, um, as much as, you know, it's, it's negative, but at the end of the day, all they're doing is like publicizing you more by commenting on your YouTube videos, Tiff. They're just increasing the engagement on that video by posting you, me on a blog page, whatever. You're just increasing my visibility. So I personally, I just don't read it. Like if I see stuff, even on my, my YouTube videos, I might like read the first few comments and then I stop. But at the end of the day, I just kind of see it as, you know what? It's just, you're promoting me and I don't even have to pay for it. So thank you. Yeah. I heard your grandma met Drizzy. Don't do this. I heard your grandma this. met Drizzy. Don't do this. Why can't Don't I do, do this? It. 
Why can't we do this? Are we doing Why? this? Yes, yes. Do you know what? I'm going to cut into you there because I know you're segueing to my nan met Drake one time and in Birmingham and met him, had a little cuddle. <laughs> she was like, tell Drake I want a cuddle. cuddle. Had a cuddle. Fast forward, she has Drake bed sheets. She's got an OVO owl <laughs> tattooed here. She's, no, she's got his face Tattoo, on her arm. real tattoo. Tattoo. Do you know what my favourite part is? She said to me she wants to get um, OVO tattooed on her neck, but the way she says it, she's like, I want to get OVO. So it's like, you're not even a real fan. No, no, but she must be she must no. be super proud of you though. She must be super, super proud of you. I think she's super proud of Drake. <laughs> like, I don't think she's proud of me at all. She only had she had her eyes on one thing that night, and it was not I her granddaughter on stage. Me. I'll tell you that. Oh, you actually yeah. killed me, man. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. What about oh. you, Maya? What was it like coming up in the scene as a woman coming from Bristol, you know? Where there's there's less opportunities, it's, it's it's harder to make it. You know what I mean? I know about the Bristol scene, but you know maybe people don't really get it. Yeah, I don't know. I had a, like a mad little journey because I moved to London at 16 on like a mm. dream chasers one of like I am going to be on Teddy, and I didn't know how and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I was just mad determined, and also had just gone through mad stuff at home and like. I think when you're younger, you're even more fearless because you're kind of naive, but in the best way possible. Like I was like, well, obviously, if I have a dream and I work really hard, I'm going to get it. Like, duh. Like I didn't really allow any doubt to come in my mind when I was young. Whereas now as I've got older, I'm a bit more like, oh, what if that happens? Or what if that says no? But me at 16 was like a fearless monster that was like, I'm going to get there. And I think mm -hmm. being so young and starting in the industry at like 17, people don't really take you as seriously or they'll think you're there for other reasons and you're constantly like questioned. So I felt like every time I was given the opportunity to like present or be on a show, I'd make sure that I did the most and tried the hardest and stood out the most and was the, the quickest or whatever it was so that I'd be noticed every time. And then through recommendation, at least if anybody asked about me, they could be like, yeah, she's young and she's a bit whatever, but she works really hard and she is good at her job. So like I'd just make sure that you couldn't, yeah. Even if you had all your doubts about other stuff, that when I was actually on camera, I did my best and like I would do everything I could to get where I wanted to go. I think you do just have to work a little bit harder because London's big and scary sometimes. Hey Tiff, what about yourself, you know? You know, you're, you're coming from Shropshire, um, yeah? To becoming one of the most well-known DJs in Can the I country. Can I just say, I remember, Shrop I remember, Shropshire sounds so, so much better than like Wolverhampton, do you know what I mean? But yeah, Shropshire. I, I tried to make it sound, you know, come on. I tried to make it nah, sound of it, it you know sound, Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Shropshire. Because when uh, I was coming up in the game, yeah. You wanted Tiffany Carver to play one of your songs at least, or at least know you, or at least look at you ah. in the rave. You know at what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bye. At least, at least give me the one Bye. head nod. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was coming up, I knew like you, you kind of was like that connection between like UK artists and American artists. That was one thing that I definitely knew about you. How how has it been yeah. with you, yourself having to hold your own in this lane and be such a female boss? I don't know. I think sometimes I look back on um how much I've missed out on for myself, like getting to know myself or just being a, a woman for the sake of trying to earn respect from men in a way, or like just to feel like I, I belonged in a space for more than to be looked at. The most important thing, and I don't know if it's a hip hop thing, the best thing you can do is earn somebody's respect in person. Like, mm. so I think, there have been multiple situations and I know like anyone in here can probably relate, even you to an extent where it's like, you might go in a studio and no one even like shakes your hand or introduces themselves or like <laughs> if you're, do you know what I mean? Or like you're automatically put Trust into me. a certain category. No, nah, definitely, definitely. Tiff, what you were saying about that, I think it's a power thing. Like I've, I've definitely walked in a room and until they certain man see I'm cool with that brother, I ain't getting yeah. no shine. No one's trying to say well gone. Everyone's not even looking at man. They're looking through man. So I've definitely felt that before. But like you said, you gotta you gotta just rise above it and be the bigger person. I not the same as Tiffany, but I obviously was in a long relationship that was public, so that helped me out without getting moved to or like people being inappropriate. <laughs> But also at the same time, I used to mad just bro zone and like family zone everybody so hard 
just so that there was no like no hope of there even being anything twisted. Yeah. And some girl DM'd me the other day and asked, like, how did you deal with it when you were coming up? Like, if like you just wanted to interview a rapper, but they were being inappropriate and like trying to talk to you, or if you just wanted to set up like something for work, but they saw it as an opportunity to hit on you, like, how would you conduct yourself? And I was like, to be honest, now. Just make sure any way that you reply to somebody, if it's on a work one, online or through text or whatever it is, like know what you're writing and be very sh like very direct, like, hello, I'm here because I want to do this. And if they start replying inappropriately, check them and say like, no, that's not what I'm here for. Like, I want to interview on that one. If it's not, if it's not that and you don't respect that, then it's cool, we don't have to speak anymore. But I think a lot of people are quite scared and shy, like understandably, to tell somebody, that's inappropriate, like, don't speak to me like that. I want an interview, not your, to take me out on a date. And I think, yeah, we, we should yeah. speak about that more because it is a bit of a weird situation that a lot of people do find themselves in. Yes. And I even sometimes, yes. if artists or people will DM me now, I just won't reply or I just will act like I haven't seen it because I'm not 100% sure if it's on a professional one or not. And I'd rather just wait until I see you in person and then you can get that vibe instead. But it is, yeah. I think always reply to someone as if you were being screen recorded. So you know that there's nothing that you're saying <laughs> yeah, back yeah. that will come back and bite you later because just just assume they are screen recording when it comes to, you know, that kind of stuff, I'd, I'd say. I, I literally was tweeting about this yesterday just because it's something that, like, uh, as an as a female artist, you experience on a regular basis. Like, yeah, this is what I wanted to talk to you about because I definitely saw what was going on. I saw what was going on. Yeah. And I saw that you was having yeah. some conversations with some people and it was kind of yeah. getting twisted. And I just wanted to like yeah. open up that conversation about what made you tweet that and what do you think needs to be done to combat it? The, the actual experiences, some of the experiences I've, I've been through, I, I want to actually take my time to sit down and talk about it properly because I feel like sometimes tweets just get lost. Like it's like a hype thing for two days and then it gets lost and like it doesn't actually create any change or any sort of progression. Um, but in terms of just like being a female in the industry and having like advances from men, it's something that happens so often. And honestly, sometimes you're made to feel like you kind of have to just smile and be like, oh, thank you so much for thinking I'm cute or whatever. You know, it makes you feel like you, you have to go along and be like, ha ha ha, anyways, when we doing studio, do you know what I mean? To not like aggravate people or to have people on your side, you do kind of feel pressured. And um, even if it's like me personally, I'm the type of person who I'm naturally like, I'm from ending, I'll be like, don't talk to me like that. I'm trying to do stuff. But People make you feel like you can't, you can't be yourself or you have no right to defend yourself. Um, and I feel like for me now, um, sadly, I have decided to act in a way where I don't, I don't go to sessions by myself anymore, which is really out of character because I, I like to roll solo. Like I'm here to do my music, whatever. So I'll go to the studio, whether it's with another artist or just me and a producer. But now if I'm working with uh, another male artist or male producer, I'm going to come with somebody and make sure that they're there at all times so that I feel safe and you're not in a position to hit on me. Um, inappropriately and make me feel like I have to flirt along with you to make you feel comfortable, even though you're making me feel uncomfortable. Um, so that's honestly how I deal with it. And um, yeah, like I, I, if somebody's like messaging me and sort of takes it into a flirty way, I kind of, I don't even reply to that. I'll just air it and carry on and be like, so anyways, the song that we're going to do, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it's kind of sad because I do feel limited in terms of what I can do about it sometimes or how I can voice my opinion on it. Like even that tweet, like having a discussion with people, you know, it's just like, you know, speak your truth and be real but like you know you don't want to piss off too many people and I'm like no because I'm pissed off like my my space and my comfort has been impacted by what by what you're doing whether it's I've been on a video shoot with another artist and he's telling me hey you're lucky this ain't um a bashment rhythm you know because man would have been walking it are you all right like, no, are you okay? No, no, Did no. I tell you I wanted you you to walk it? Said I even wanted you as well. <laughs> Did I the tell confidence, you that? the I audacity, the confidence, the confidence of it. Mm -hmm. Or if it's you know from a producer, I've been in so many different scenarios, and honestly, it's so sad. But I feel like as as I don't know how you guys deal with it as presenters, but like as an artist, I just feel like roll with your roll with your team. At least one person to make sure that you're safe at all times.
I think it's important to have this conversation where all of us are very headstrong people that if somebody does try something, we're not afraid to, to say something. But even me being headstrong, I've had moments where I felt like I couldn't. And I think that it's important to have this conversation where somebody who is coming up or is very young or naive and is being spoken to by someone who's presenting an opportunity to them that they think if they don't go along with it, they're not going to have the opportunity again. So they entertain mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I think that's important to have that conversation too, because mm. saying no and turning it down and being headstrong, yeah. But there's also people that are anxious and that's how, that's yeah. how a lot of these situations happen from the yep. anxiety of this is my shot or like, this is my yeah. opportunity. I have to go I along with it, it, which is, yeah. And that's really sad, but it happens all yeah. the time. No, it's, it's, it's definitely, I think it's definitely a thing that needs to get highlighted. I think it's it's been part of all industries, not just the music industry, not just the yeah. television yeah, presenter industry. I think That's it's part of all, in, it's, a, it's, a, it's a society just problem, society. but the fact that you're yeah. highlighting, it in, highlighting it in music is that it definitely happens. I've definitely heard this before. If I was the person that made you feel that type of way, I would feel disgusting that I had to put you through that yet. You couldn't, you didn't feel comfortable enough to come to a session on your own because you 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 felt like you had to have that person as like a safeguard. Tiff, like you said, these conversations need to happen a bit more. And I feel like we're in a time now where situations are getting highlighted online. But what is sad is that you had to speak up, you had to do a tweet, but now people are gonna demonize you because of that and put you in a certain category mm. of of, oh. Mm. Maybe man might not even work with her because I don't want her to get it twisted. Because mm. I think what happens is, mm. is that as soon as someone gets combated, they fall back and say, I weren't even on that, bruv. Do you know what? I, I, and that's where I feel like I don't, I wouldn't even put the pressure on, on other women or other artists or whatever to, to speak up about it. It's up to you how you, how you want to deal with it publicly or not publicly because... You, you're gonna, I'm not going to be there when you face the backlash. I'm not going to be there if those that person mm. doesn't want to work with you. Do you know what I mean? So it's up to you how you want to deal with it. But for me, I felt... Even what I said was just a very tiny snippet of the actual situation. Yeah. And I feel like, for me, I had to at least say something, at least so that now I know they're not, no one's going to try it again. <laughs> no one's going to try that again because at least they, mm. they're they going to think, oh, rah, raise on this, they raise on this Twitter thing. Like, I'm not really, but in this situation, I had to say something. But yeah, it's so sad that I feel like in society, uh, one, people question women's intelligence. Like, we can't tell the difference from complimenting and sexual harassment. I'm not an idiot. There's a big yep. difference between mm. that. Happy to accept a compliment. Thank you very much. But sexual harassment's completely different. Um, and also... I think it's just sad that there's like victim blaming, victim shaming of like, someone actually even asked me like, oh, but did you give him a vibe? What? Like, this, did you give him a vibe? What What were you wearing? You know, what, what did you say first? It's just, I think I it's, it's, it's much bigger stuff. than, it's much bigger than the industry and whatever. It's a big societal issue. But I'd, honestly, I don't have the answers of what we're going to do to change that. But I think within this creative industry that we're in, we need to make more safe spaces and more sort of like unions where women can come to and discuss what they're going through, support each other and just, yeah, places where we can be comfortable. There's definitely steps that need to be taken for things to, to become better. And I think like highlighting your experiences, if people hear this, they may they may check themselves. And I think and I think things like what you tweeted, it's definitely, it's definitely making people, people have definitely had these kind of conversations before. I've definitely heard these conversations happen. I've had these conversations with women in the scene and the pressure, I think one of the biggest pressures is that am I going to lose this opportunity? Like, coming to each of you individually, how have you felt the kind of pressures within getting opportunities within the game? Like, Maya, you said when you was coming up, you had to be the funniest in the room, the sm smartest in the room, the quickest in the room. What, what was that like, like, building up through that to, to get where you are now? Well, I don't know, because only a couple of years ago, I didn't realise I was doing a TV show and it was around the time when it was all in the press about um, pay gap. And I was doing the same amount of hours, I was speaking the same amount, if not more than my co-host and we were doing live TV like four days a week and I was like wait well, how much do you get paid and obviously normally you wouldn't ask that but because it was all over the press that like the pay gap in the media and da, 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 I was like really I didn't think this was still happening naively and then I found out how much he got paid and it was a big difference to what I was getting paid and there was no proof that he was more skilled than me that the only difference was that he was a man and I was a woman and I couldn't believe that it was even still like happening then and, and since then with jobs like I will make sure 
when my manager checks, like, how much is he getting paid if we're doing the same? Make sure it's equal. Like, and I'll go out of my way to, to check those things, which I shouldn't have to, it should just be standard. I don't, I don't know what exactly is going to change it, but I just hope the more people that actually check jobs and say, yo, like, I'm doing exactly what this person's doing. What reasons are there that we're not get, be, getting paid the same? And hopefully by more people challenging it, it won't be a thing. And I think that's, yeah, that's a small part of sexism. It's a whole massive, another thing when it comes to outfits and how you look and you do one thing and a man does another thing. And it's such a wide topic that's super frustrating sometimes. I think one of the biggest examples of this was with the um, booking of artists at festivals. I think there's this weird thing that's happening now, which has, Especially for me, as a DJ that gets booked at festivals, I hate the insecurity that now comes with, am I being booked because I'm good or because I fit or because they have, they feel like they have to reach this percentage of female talent that they now have to book for a festival. And I think that's ridiculous because there are a million talented women that you can pick that will fit into your stage or your this or your that. It shouldn't be a courtesy booking. So I don't really like that at all. Prime example for me, there was a festival that I was booked for this year, which had females booked. Um, however, missed all of them on the actual promo for the festival. It was just the men. And I'm just like, are we in the same times? Like, you've been canceled already. So like, what? Do you know what though? My other thing is I feel like when it comes to festival bookings, um, of course the festivals definitely should be booking women and you know, they should make that a priority. But I also feel like it starts from like the gatekeepers of the industry because the reason why festivals, you know, book people is because you are popular, you have a popular song. If you come out and perform, people will be present for it. And if mm. women are not given the opportunity to actually be shown, be supported, whether it's on playlisting, whether it's by like labels actually signing more female artists or whether it's like writers, producers working with more females, um, if, if that's not happening, then they don't actually get the opportunity to become more popular. So I feel like really yeah. it starts mm. from the gatekeepers who opened the doors for all these male artists to, to do the same for female artists, really. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I had to check myself when I had my show um, on radio. I never really kind of like looked at myself and was like questioning, am I playing enough women on the show? Like, especially coming from the grime scene where there are bagger gal them shelling, like people like Lioness and, you know, there's some people like Talifa, people that I can, if I stand up with them in a set, they're gonna be bullying me. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> like, it's kind of it's one of them things where um, having these convos, as much as it is, it, it can be considered corny and a bit like, raw. We're really talking about this. It kind of opens certain eyes for me. Like, I had to like check myself. Like, raw. I just did a whole two-hour show. I didn't play one song from a girl, and the only song that was from a girl was she was singing on the chorus. I want to start wrapping it up because I feel like we've had we've had an amazing conversation. <laughs> Could I just get a message from each of you to just help try <laughs> and inspire um, young people, especially young women coming up in the game, coming up in, in, in the creative field and just like just a, a final message that you could um, give to them. No pain is forever. And I think a lot of times when we're down in the dumps in different aspects in life, we might think, oh my gosh, there's no hope. Like this is the worst case situation. It's never gonna get better than this. And we can allow ourselves to think that like, I'm gonna feel like this forever. And it's not. Whether it's in a week or a day, in a month, things always get a bit better in time. And I just say that all the times when you wanna give up and say no, those are the times when you have to go ham because those, that's the difference between somebody that gets to there and somebody that gets to there, is that extra mile that you push yourself when you're so close. So I just say, yeah, consistency, fight for it, fight the power, love. Boom. <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany, can we, get, can we get a message from you? Do you know what, I have a tattoo on my arm, which is in French, it's from one of my favorite films, which is a film called La Haine, and it says, jusqu'ici tout va bien, which means so far, so good. And I have it on my arm so I can look at it because, you know, that's, you know, that's a reason to get a tattoo, isn't it? So I can look at it. So I have it there. And when I'm going through a really tough time or if I'm about to like go on stage and I'm really nervous or if something really bad's happened, 
there's a, a scene in the film where basically it sounds really bad. A guy falls off a skyscraper. This is the story. So he falls off the skyscraper and on his way down, he keeps saying so far, so good, so far, so good, so far, so good, because it's not how you fall, it's how you land. So no matter what you're going through, you're, you haven't landed yet. So, so far, so good. Live in the present. Ray, Ray can we Beat get a final one from you, please? <laughs> These men have lyrics. They've got like movie quotes. Um, Trust. How do I follow that? No, my message really, my message for, for young women coming up in the game is honestly, just to not let any disadvantage that you have stop you. Um, it's so easy to um, feel like you shouldn't go for what you want or your dreams are impossible because you don't see anybody doing whatever it is you want to do. And I just want to remind people that you can be that person who does that for someone else. You can be that person who represents that person who also doesn't see themselves. So see it not as something that should stop you, but as a barrier you can break and be a pioneer of. So um, just, yeah, chase your dreams and be the change that you want to see. Jeez. Oh, you oh, like absolutely got smashed it. it. We got one. You absolutely Burn smashed it. it. From the way, hey, Michelle Obama. Obama, 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 Tiffany Calva, Ray Black, Maya Jama. Amazing women doing amazing things within the scene. Thank you for joining me. Myself, Big Zoo. You're done now.